So far we have discussed about the pollution in 0 to 10 kilometers that is tropospheric pollution and uh, various types of the pollution occurring over there, how to control everything we have discussed. Some more discussion we will add up into that air pollution. Now, it is comes as a comes under particulate air pollution. Particulate air pollution what is its cause? What are the effects of particulate pollutants if they are present in the atmosphere and how do you control the particulate air pollution? So, let us see the particulate air pollution or air pollutants. These are the minute microscopic solid particles or liquid particles even droplets of air and uh, liquid droplets in the air or solid particles which are present in the minute quantity invisible to the eyes they are considered to be particulate air pollutants. These are present in vehicle emissions how do you get it they are emitted due to vehicle movement or the exhaust fumes coming out from the automobiles and that vehicle emissions emission, emitting gases produces particulate air pollutants or smoke the, the smoke itself consists of the particulate air pollutants and uh, particles from the fires dust particles and uh, ash which is coming out from the flying fly ash industries or from any source of ash we can get the particulate air pollutant which are microscopic in size. Particulate particles in the atmosphere may be viable or non viable may be viable may be having life may be they do not have even life viable or non viable they are considered to be particulate air pollutants ok. What are the viable and uh, non viable particles? Particles in the air can be classified as viable particles and non viable what are they? What is about viable particles? Let us see now what is meant by viable particles. The particles two types viable and non viable. The minute living organisms the, li li the minute living organisms dispersed in the atmosphere. So, so, the particle which is associated with the life is a viable one examples bacteria, fungi, molds, algae etcetera. So, the one which is having the association with the life you can consider that as a viable particle. So, the particles having are associated with life is a viable particle. Examples already I have told you bacteria, fungi, molds, algae etcetera. Now, what are non viable particles? Non viable particles may be classified according to their size ok. You can tell them as smoke particles. These are formed during the combustion of the organic matter. It may be a solid particle or mixture of solid and liquid particles. Smoke particles are formed during the combustion of the organic matter. It may be solid or it may be a mixture of solid and liquid particles. So, it is number 1. Number 2 uh, and, uh, and I, I give you examples for this. Examples are cigarette smoke. The cigarette smoke consists of a non viable particle which is a non associated with the life. So, you can write here as particles. associated with no life. This is you can understand as a non viable particle. So, example I have already have told you this example here cigarette smoke. It is having it is obtained smoke is coming by burning the cigarettes. It is nothing but carbon or organic matter present tobacco in it. So, there is a non viable which is having no life. It is not associated with the life. Another example I can tell you smoke coming out from the fossil fuels. Fossil fuels when burnt. So, the smoke which is emitting from the chimneys exhaust fumes coming out of the chimneys are considered to be uh, related to the non viable particles. This is also associated with no life. Another example I can tell you garbage dry leaves. When you burn the garbage dry leaves it will emit the smoke that is also having a non viable microscopic invisible particles. And another example I can tell you oil smoke. Oil smoke also another example it is also consisting or producing non viable particles ok. And uh, 
this is example 1 what is example 1 smoke in the smoke we have seen types of the particles viable and non viable and various examples we have discussed let me tell you example 2 in the non viable particles example or class 2 i can say class 1 smoke class 2 dust particles it is composed of what is meant by dust particle it is composed of fine solid particles size of 1 micrometer diameter 1 micrometer diameter produced during crushing grinding and uh, attributing the solid materials let me tell you examples sand from the sand blasting units sand coming out sand particles coming out microscopic particles coming out non viable particles coming out from the sand blasting units is the best example for the dust particles and comes under non viable another example i can tell you fly ash coming out from the factories the fly ash which is releasing out from the factories is an example for this class class 3 under non viable mists what is meant by mists these are produced by particles of sprays or spray liquids and by condensation of the vapors in the air so the mist particles enter into atmosphere as a non viable particles they are produced by uh, by spray industries and also condensation of vapors in the air example sulfuric acid units in the sulfuric acid industry sulfuric acid mist come out that will come into the atmosphere as a non viable particle comes under this class mists okay so this is another class where I can tell you example as sulfuric acid mist another example I can tell you for the same class herbicides coming out from the spraying of the herbicides and insecticides we will spray insecticides for the killing of the insects in the, on the fields so these are also comes under the class of mists so this is the third class and the non viable particles and the fourth class is a fumes fourth class is fumes in the fourth category fumes also comes into the atmosphere as a non viable particulate pollutants they are generated or they are generally obtained by the formation of vapors during sublimation you know what is meant by sublimation conversion of solid into vapor is called sublimation without any liquid phase distillation conversion of liquid into vapors by heating vapors when cooled will get back the liquid this is called what distillation boiling boiling point boiling process and other chemical processes during all these processes you can observe the fumes the fume particles comes out as a non viable particles examples i can tell you organic solvents all the organic solvents are generally released uh, they comes out as a fumes this is also fourth class uh, that is a fumes non viable particulate pollution metals from the metallic oxides from the uh, from the uh, in the form of fume particles they will released this is also another example comes under this class as a fourth one that is a fumes these are all comes under non viable particulate pollutants let's see now what are the adverse effects due to particulate pollutions adverse effects due to particulate pollutants may be viable may be non viable let us see now a pregnant woman delivers baby with a small head and body it's due to particulate air pollutions inhaling them it's a uh, very uh, serious uh, environmental uh, pollutant that is a particulate pollutant causes the damage particularly pregnant women deliver baby with a small head and body okay and such babies are slow learners have increased the risk of cancers have damage of dna's have reduced vision these are all the problems or dangerous signs because of the particulate pollutions inhaling by the preg pregnant women. Okay, then let me tell you some more adverse effects due to particulate pollutants. Examples tell me, uh, let, let me tell you about okay, mercury as a particulate pollutant and uh, lead as a particulate pollutant what happened when mercury particles are inhaled it will cause headache it will cause nervousness it will cause fatigueness it will cause central nervous system damage or breakdown so the mercury causes all these effects and what are the effects due to lead due to lead accumulation inside the body causes 
malfunctioning of RBCs and causing anemia. RBCs are not produced properly, it leads to produce anemia. People look anemic, bloodlessness is just because of excess quantity of lead in our human system. And uh, it also damages the liver, kidneys, intestine and uh, central nervous system also. So, these are the adverse effects because of the lead and on the whole I have told you about the adverse effects due to mercury particulate pollutants and also lead particulate pollutants. Let me continue for some more metals like cadmium. Cadmium if it comes as a particulate pollutant, it will also cause lung irritation, vomiting sensation, hypertension, blood pressure is increased, formation of photochemical smog. These are all due to cadmium as a particulate pollutant and uh, these particulates okay, usually they penetrate into the lungs. These particulates usually they penetrate into the lungs and uh, you can see when they enter into the lung scaring of fibrosis and uh, lining is observed inside the lung okay, and uh, it may lead to produce lung cancers. It gives the lung cancers okay, and, uh, uh, and also it will cause blockage of the lungs, lung related diseases and white lung disease also observed because of this particulate pollutants if they goes into the lungs. These are all adverse effects due to particulate pollutants if they are being inhaled by the human beings. Then the next point will come, if they are such dangerous particles, how do we control them? Yes, we can control them through some advanced technology and through that technology we can definitely uh, remove from atmosphere to certain extent so that we can save some okay, lives or we can control the particulate pollution entry into the atmosphere. Let us see now how do we control the particulate pollutants in the atmosphere. Let us see how do we control the particulate pollutants in the atmosphere. Yes, because of the technology improvement in the science, we can control them, we can reduce their okay, concentrations at least by one method called gravity setting chamber. Removing large particles can be done easily by this gravity setting chamber method. This is number one. Number two, cyclone collectors. The cyclone collectors remove fine particles of a size 5 to 20 microns, 5 to 20 microns. Number three, wet scrubbing machines. Wet scrubbers remove all types of the particles. Wet scrubbers remove all the types of the particulate pollutants and uh, by these three methods, I repeat number one gravity setting chamber method, number two cyclone collectors, number three wet scrubbing machines by using all these three techniques, first one removes the large one, second one removes the 5 to 20 micron size particles, wet scrubber remove all the types of particles of all sizes so that we can remove or we can control the particulate pollutants in the atmosphere. By this way, we can help the environment and recently we can also add the fourth method that is electrostatic precipitators. Electrostatic precipitators also used to remove any aerosols, air generated soil particles or colloidal sized particles you can call as aerosols. So, aerosols also can be removed by electrostatic precipitating machinery. This is the fourth method for removal of the particulate pollutants in the atmosphere. Now, let us see if any questions are asked on this. Uh, they can ask you a question like mercury causes what kind of diseases, what kind of the hazard. So, if the options are given like headache, nervousness, fatigueness, all the above. So, as per as the discussion of which I have made it, we can go for answer. It causes headache, it causes nervousness, it causes fatig fatigueness. Therefore, we can go for answer as all of this. Like this, a question is possible. Let us see another type of question how it could be. Particulate pollution can be controlled by, how do you control the particulate pollution? So, options are given suppose like this gravity setting chamber method, cyclone collection methods, wet scrubbing machine methods, all of these. So, obviously, we have to go for answer as all of these. So, like this we can control, we can reduce the 
particulate pollutants present in the atmospheric air.